talking about the plan uh, that is going to be followed, the program of action that is going to be followed to uh, deal with this whole thing of uh, reconfiguration, uh, etc. Um, it further, of course, goes on to say that you will be working with the other department, um, but uh, that still is a problem, in my own opinion, because uh, it's only the uh, 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 I mean, a, an issue where we will be able to say that that particular department will be able to work uh, properly and deliver that we shall be able to rise and make sure that everything is fine. I suppose, uh, looking at that, you will be able to uh, respond. Now, my other uh, colleagues here have referred to SABC. You see, this is uh, very important because, like one said, and like some have said, on very many occasions in the past years, that has been uh, looked into. But ministers will come, make presentations, make uh, promises, but there was no implementation altogether. Um, you have uh, indicated the area that is section 189. Of course, that's very important. Um, the people cannot just be sacked. Uh, that is extremely important. We need to look into that. I mean, some of us who come from the trade union movement uh, will not agree with the situation where we have that kind of uh, a, a problem, chairperson, okay, or action. Now, we know that the information that we're given in the past, uh, that the workers there were about uh, 3,090, uh, between that and 4,000. But then there was a problem where some of those particular uh, members of staff will be um, you know, reading the news, but at the same time going on with the other programs, etc. And that created problems. Have you looked into that? Uh, it may, you may not have done that. I mean, the uh, administration may assist you as you go on to respond to that, to say, what has actually happened in so far as that is concerned. So that is one area around the staff. But again, many other people have been dismissed or others have not been getting enough salaries. Others were given only 8,000 rand a month. Okay? Now that's a very serious problem. While others like the uh, former, uh, what must I call him? Mr. M was getting more than millions, eh? but then you find this other uh, poor workers getting about um, 8,000 rand. Who are so, you referring to? Uh, who is that man who was the, was he the COO or CEO? <laughs> he went to uh, elections for Saudi, whatever, yes, okay. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, lots and lots of millions. I think uh, uh, members and the minister really uh, we will know about that. Now, uh, that is a very serious problem. Perhaps uh, we may get, uh, you know, a clarity in so far as uh, that particular problem is concerned. The issue of crisis there needs to be looked into. And I would beg that you respond to that. Not only respond, but uh, act. Because in the past, promises were given, but those particular promises were not actualized. It's a very serious problem, and uh, that particular uh, institution can collapse at any time. We say we're going to give them money uh, tomorrow. We don't. And then I know you, a uh, minister, you will try your best, cry, do all that, uh, beg the uh, Minister of Finance to do something, and uh, you will go on and on, and only the day before it collapsed, you have uh, this kind of things, etc. Kindly, um, 
say to uh, this committee before your budget uh, that something will be done so that we then can be able to uh, preserve this institution that belongs to South Africans. Thanks for now. Member Kombo. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I had uh, the DG talking about uh, uh, the World uh, Radio Conference. Uh, and uh, about uh, this uh, frequency spectrum, normally, which are normally called, uh, known as the 5G. Now, my question is, what, what would be the significance of the World Conference uh, in the licensing of these uh, 5Gs? And how will South Africa take advantage of uh, these uh, new opportunities? That's my first question on the issue of uh, frequency spectrum radius. My second one will be on uh, SABC. I, I, I think it's common knowledge that SABC is facing a uh, uh, serious financial challenges which have uh, placed it on a uh, brink of shutdown. Uh, somebody was talking of uh, zero day, day zero. Uh, now my question is, what is it that uh, still needs to be done? before these current, the current challenges uh, reach uh, the unmanageable level. Those are, those are my two questions, then I'll come back with another one if you uh, have. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Let me once again welcome the presentation, both pre presentations. Indeed, uh, 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 presentations were informative. But let me shoot straight to the question that, uh, my question is, what are the long term plan to ensure that this important sector <coughs> is competitive in a way that contributes to the reduction of data charges. I'm asking that question because there is an outcry that uh, data charges are, are very high. Let me pause here. I will then come back to the SAPC. Thank you. Okay. My, my, my second question is um, how much of the country is currently covered by D DTT signals? Are there communities that current, currently receive the DTT signals? What are the experience from the viewer's point of view. Thank you, Chairperson. Let's give the development the opportunity to answer. Can I, can I come in, Chair? As a response, yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Minister, Minister and Honorable Members. I think, um, Chair, I'm not going to take the issues in, in sequence, and, and there, there will be quite a number that are also different to, to the Minister. Uh, members will remember that uh, initially we had the Department of Communications and the Department of Telecoms and Postal Services. And for the regulatory 
processes and policies to be uh, presented to Parliament. From time to time, you would need concurrence or buy-in between the two, including SOEs. And, and good examples will be when DOC wants to do this with ICASA, but at some point, ICASA also has to go through to DTPS and so on. And I think this is what also um, informed the decision of the president to say the two departments must come together so that the synergy and we are able to align. Now, um, when we came in as two departments um, in this form, one of the things that we also picked up is that the policy directive and legal frameworks that we do were more inward looking other than countrywide looking in the sector. And that's why Minister then guided to say, let's look at all this regulatory framework and then look at the bigger picture that we want of South Africa in the sector that we're dealing with. And I'll give you another example, practical example, that when, when I was in the Standing Committee on Finance and the African bank had its own challenges, we amended the Bank Act just to respond to the African bank, only to find that we must come back again and say, now the postal bank, now this. So the reason why we now want to say, let's look at the broader picture of South Africa we want, and then develop legislation and policies that becomes responsive to some of those things. That's why the withdrawal of some of those whether ECA or anything that we withdrew and then say, let's sit broadly and look at uh, all the sectors that are under us and then look at how we want to drive South Africa. That's the one element. But the president even took it further to say, let's put the fourth industrial revolution, the commission on 4IR, so that they too can look at the gaps that are there and regulatory framework and then be able to guide the country as we go forward. So there are those areas which uh, the minister is of course leading that process from, from the uh, inter-ministerial committee where the 4IR commission will also look at the, the state of readiness of, of South Africa in responding to the fourth industrial revolution. And we think the skills and capacity that we have in the 4IR Commission will also assist us to be as responsive as, as possible. And the one element that we picked up, Che, was how as South Africa we lost an opportunity through DTT to be able to put massive manufacturing companies that can supply the whole of Africa. So other countries even uh, migrated without us becoming the launching pad for manufacturing some of those things. So the commission will also assist us to make sure that at least we don't become consumers or spectators, but we ready ourselves to manufacture and play in that space. The, the other issue changed around the diagnosis stick report of the SABC. And, and I think here, uh, members, some members and, and ourselves uh, still have that good memory. Remember the, the previous board was able to go through the challenges that the SABC had, including even uh, taking the, the, or strengthening that board with the SIU investigation to say what went wrong in the SABC. So over and above the challenges including what Scopa was looking at on the financial um, um, uh, suitability and, and the, the post, facto, post ex post facto programs that Scopa looks at. There were other issues that through SIU and everybody were able to, to look at. And that's why 
through the former minister Mukonyani, we then started the program with the previous board of turnaround strategy. Not only that, when the new minister came, we then reviewed the, the, the strategy because GTEC and National Treasury said some of the things that you're looking at are updated. Let's update so that you are able to then um, have a, a plan that can attract anybody to come and assist the SMB situation. So not all is lost and the engagement with the banks, with all other financiers, Minister of Communications and Digital Technology and the Minister of Finance are leading that process. So it's, it's one of those things that um, is top on our agenda. The last issue, Chair, is about DTT. And I, I'll talk from the, the, the monitoring point of view and use the, first, the free state um, um, situation as a living example. Remember, um, as government, we said, because the slow progress on this thing, one, but two, uh, price has escalated. The way we took long to implement uh, DTT. We were we are overtaken by quite a number of things, including price, but also technology is advancing. Now, one of the things we did as the department uh, a month or two ago was to go to the free state to say, did we actually migrate? And we went to areas from Senegal to all those areas, and and we found teething problems and that's why the minister then said maybe we have to go back and review because in areas in in in, in the most of the free state areas uh, there are areas where you need a dtt and there are areas where you need a dth where you need the area like um what what happens so the signals issues which csir has we, when we, we were rolling out the DTT, we, we were not alive to some of the topography challenges. And that's why other people could not view TVs, could not, could not be able to get signal and so on. But it's, it's something that we picked it up with our own USASA and Centec, and we are self-correcting as we speak. So I think those are the things that um, um, I will leave. Okay, the last one was around installers, where uh, installers were not based in, in, in the free state. So even if um, there's a small and a thing with regard to the connectivity, people have to wait for a company based in Pretoria to come in and do those kind of things. So these are the lessons learned, and that's why Minister will then share with you um, on how we think we can deal with some of these things. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, DM, and thank you, Chairperson. Uh, if I were to respond to the first question that was asked in relation to what is it that we're thinking in terms of objectives of on licensing of the spectrum, um, President Norma Pasta did announce uh, during his State of the Nation address that uh, we will, within a month, issue a policy direction, that's the first thing that we're looking at. But of course, our approach is guided by the ECA on the licensing of the spectrum, is to say how do we make sure that we utilize that opportunity to make sure that we contribute positively towards the development of the sector. At the same time, we address the imbalances that are here as we, we will talk about the need for transformation as enshrined in our constitution. And of course, ensuring that we also contribute towards uh, the, 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 the falling of the data cost or the reduction of the, of, 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 of the cost to communicate. So those are the basic things that we're looking at. And of course, we'll unpack on the policy direction that we will issue as soon as we're able to. The other question is, DM has spoken to the issue of the, of the challenges that are facing SABC and she has given a progress report in terms of what are the things that we're doing and how far we are. One thing, honorable members, that we cannot unfortunately say is that Wednesday there's going to be money transferred to SABC. If it was in our account, probably we'll be able to do so, but as honorable Matisha puts it, 
we work from our side and do what we have to do and send the information as required. And as I said, even on Thursday, we will be meeting with the DG Treasury. So I can't preempt what's going to happen after that. So unfortunately for now, there's nothing we can say. Hopefully by next week, we'll have a concrete information to say what things. That's the unfortunate thing. Yes, the challenges that are facing SABC can be resolved, honorable members. I spoke, the reason I took you through all of that, it's just probably I don't know how, if it's how I expressed it, that the honorable member got an impression that I'm lambasting this board members. For your information, honorable member, we're working very well with this board. There are no relationship issues. There are no secrets in relation to the work that we do. Whoever has that information or suspicion must wake up from the dream. The reality we're living in, that's why I said we talk every week on updates on what must happen, this, that they can do, how do we come on board to assist them, and what else can we leverage on to make sure that SABC is assisted. I meant it when I said the ANC government prioritizes the issue of SABC sustainability. I'm not just talking about a recent announcement that has been made, but even if you were to go to the governing party's resolutions, it has been consistent on the kind of support that government must provide to SABC in order to drive or fulfill its mandate. It's on top of our agenda, as I said. But unfortunately, as I said, honorable members, we operate under a constitution, under regulated frameworks that we have established ourselves that we must all respect and try to navigate because as we put them in place, at times we do feel like they need to be changed because they delay progress, but between that process of changing them and that that have to be done, we all have to adhere to them, which is why I said even sourcing external assistance was meant to make sure that we address all these things that we are asked that we must comply with in terms of the ACBC. I gave background of where we come from, because I said for the benefit of the new members, because they may come and say, it has been said in 2017, SABC applied for government guarantee, but that's nothing, which is why I clarified that indeed a government guarantee application was made by SABC, but was later withdrawn, and then the process halted. That's the, 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 the information that I was trying to provide. So we are working day in and day out we don't have time, so if we wake up at 4 a.m., we think about whatever, we send messages to other to say, meet tonight, meet tomorrow, come. Because we all agree, we're not here for ourselves. It doesn't matter if I like her or I don't. We're not here to like each other. We're here to deliver on the mandate that we've been given by the people of South Africa as guided in the Constitution. Liking each other, not liking each other, you know, clad with this, um, a term, a, a phrase, a person that will say, you are an intent. And people will be asking that, hey, what, what happened? No, I can't, I can't, I can't, says, I don't like it. Why? No, no, I, I just don't like it. We, we don't have space for that. When we are deployees, when we are employees, because we owe it to the nation to serve them diligently. So our likes and dislikes take back seat. They know, we all say that, we are not here to be friends. We're not trying to, we have lots of friends where we come from, but here, that that matters is that we must make sure that that public gets the best service that it gets. Even if we feel like, I'm angry, I always emphasize also that when we disagree, let's disagree here, because at times we'll be questioning the same thing, not because we have ulterior motives, but we want clarity. So let's make sure that we talk to each other where we don't understand each other for the interest of the people of South Africa. And that we are doing with this SABC. Both the executive, and the board. We are like this. <coughs> and we won't allow any devil to come in between us. <laughs> we are trying to assist in terms of uh, uh, the other question that was asked in terms of what is that we're doing in order to assist SABC financially, policy wise, and is SABC responsive? Yes, SABC is responsive. That's why I'm saying we're able, our teams, they meet together, and then all the meetings that we're talking about, they all go together. Where they start, then we get a report where they need political intervention, and then we come on board as the shareholder to say, okay, leave ABCD, will attend to it, attend to that, that, that is within your power. So they are responding, and yes, in terms of the policy, as mentioned on the, on the, on the presentation, 
that uh, we will be tabling uh, the broadcasting amendment bill, something, something that also um, Honorable Fandam spoke to. We have not said the act, we said we, we are tabling the amendment bill that has components that at least will ease SABZ of certain bans. There's lots of things the honourable members, we will take them through when we present the bill in terms of what are the objects of the bill and what is that we intend to, to, to achieve through those amendments that we are making. And it, it, it says in the presentation it's going to be tabled and finalised, the presentation that we made. It says the broadcasting amendment bill as listed in page 14 is going to be tabled and finalised, that's 2019-20. And 2020-21, it says we'll be monitoring reports on the implementation because we do appreciate the role of Parliament. We introduce bills to Parliament. It is Parliament that approves. We are very clear we don't plan to encroach. And if there's a writing somewhere that we have not seen that refers to the Broadcasting Amendment as the Act, I, 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 was, I, I will look for that. But the one that I have on page 14 talks the amendment bill. Honourable members, I want to assure you that as the ministry, one thing that we're clear about is that we can't do our work without your support. That's why at all times we have to be transparent on what we're going through. So that as you seek to guide and do your oversight, you understand exactly where we come from. Of course, we're not going to be naked on our implementation. But transparency is very important so that when we say now we're changing from this goal that we you understand where we come from. But most importantly, you understand what is that we want to address by the changes that, that we are trying to, 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 to bring. The, the, the broadcasting, of course, will await because we had to wait for the first sitting and the other things. And then we'll come and make the presentation. Uh, I don't have a specific date yet. Now we're going to request uh, the portfolio committee to give us an opportunity when we're ready to come and, and, and make the presentation. We are very confident in terms of the release of the policy direction of spectrum. But of course, honorable members, we don't know what can happen after. So I can't say there won't be delays, but we are talking with the regulator. But remember, this is a process that is not only between the shareholder and the regulator. It involves other people out there that must apply for license, <coughs> must apply for whatever. Others will come and challenge or whatever. So we do not know. We have tried to have consultations. The former ministers did it. I came and I did it. But at the end of the day, we have to close consultations and make sure that South Africa is not left behind. And the policymaker has to play his or her own role, which is why we, we, spoke, we speak about the issuing of the policy direction soon. Yes, uh, ICASA is, 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 is adequately funded, especially in relation to this. If you remember, in those that were here in the, in the last administration, ICASA raised concerns <coughs> with the money that they didn't have. We had allocated a sum of 10 million rands that was already transferred to them in relation to this that they've spoken about outside the, 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 uh, the allocation that they always get. So yes, ICASA has not come back to us and say, now we're running short of, of anything outside that money that we provided. It's very important, as you, as you correctly put it, Honorable Fandam, that we ensure that we build the digital society. When I spoke of NEMISA, which is our training institute, it doesn't train in Jobek. We work with colleagues uh, throughout the country, <coughs> different universities in the Western Cape, we're working with UWC, in the Eastern Cape, we're working with USU and, and, and in other provinces. That and TVETs. That we do because we want to massify the skills. You are saying we must train teachers. In other provinces, I know, for example, I went to, to UKZN, where we were launching a program where actually they were graduating the teachers themselves. Of course, it's not something that's going to happen today, all of it. We've been training from, the, from all angles. DG Telecoms makes mention of the fact that we, we sat and commissioned a study to understand what is the skills gap on digital what that we're talking about. Then the strategy that we're developing, as he correctly puts it, that this is a strategy that covers <coughs> the entire government, not just our, our department, but because we're a lead department in the sector. So we have to look into this because I spoke of the development of the sector and most importantly, the need to build the digital society that we're talking about. So we are working with, with, with other departments because we will not just come and give instructions. Ours is to, in the strategy, we engage with all of them to say we agree and then how you can come back. Because it's the issue of resources also that we must take into consideration as we roll out these programs that we want to, to roll out. 
CETA uh, being the IT company and the fact that we must not only focus on it business, or we must create an enabling environment for business. DM, when she makes her input, she makes a very good point that we have emphasized that it is high time, I said earlier we're learning from the years, it is high time that as government, when we create policies or regulations, is those that are not inward looking. As government, we cannot drive the growth of GDP. As government, we can't employ all, but it is through the sector, the participation of both government in creating those policies and the private sector and the public that must join hands so that they can come with ideas that government, this we can do, all we need from you is to do ABCD or do away with ABCD. So we are trying to make sure, of course, the reason why we talk about the state IT company, we need to coordinate crucial to the work that we are doing in especially of driving the fourth industrial revolution, but also on maximizing on the state resources for efficient and effective service delivery is coordination, collaboration for effective execution. Now, if I have everybody involved in IT procurement of government, and is going to an extent <coughs> on the fundam of buying equipment for this particular department that can service the entire country. That's wasteful. So the point that we are making is that there's a need for that command, because at the end of the day, it is government that is the biggest uh, spender on all of this. But as I said earlier, government has realized that we need the private sector, we need young people to innovate and create solutions that CETA must utilize. The remodeling of CETA focuses on that, how do we drive